Good afternoon, YouTube. So I finally got around to doing my transmission fluid here. I uh, found out <clears throat> a whole lot today that I wasn't really terribly excited to find out, to be honest. Um, just means more money, more parts, and... Uh... And then, yes, it has to do with transmission, but uh, I don't know if y'all can tell... I wiped a spot off, that's the shiny spot. The chunks, I believe, are broken magnet, because I think this is either supposed to be one piece or two half circles, and now well, there's a big chunk missing there that's in other chunks, and those chunks are magnetic, so they, are, they stick to everything. So I'm pretty sure this magnet got destroyed for some reason, but uh, I think there's a fair bit of uh, material there, but... Yeah, this isn't the original transmission for this car. That's the thing I found out today. Being a Hurst Olds, this is supposed to have a four-speed transmission, and that's what the option code in the trunk lists is a four-speed transmission. Unfortunately, this is a three-speed transmission, and not just your typical uh, cutlass three-speed transmission. Uh, for an 84 at least. This is a... What I used to find the gasket and the filter together is a 1976, not 84, 1976 Cutlass. Uh, I think I did 5.7 5 liter and uh, this, has, this transmission is a 375, I believe. Um... Rock Auto lists this transmission pan gasket, but not the filter, for the THM 375-something. A, was it? Something like that. D, B, I think it's B. Okay, so, uh, but the 375 and 400 are supposedly the same transmission, just with different splines on the rear end or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I googled... 1976 Cutlass, uh, 5.7 liter, 400 or THM 400, and it came up with this pan and gasket, which uh, is this kit right here. Now, why this would have the wrong? You can see it's the right, the right pan shape, and uh, I got the filter underneath the car on the other drain pan, but that should be the right filter. It looks right. Um, why you ask how I came up with 76 is I googled that THM 375B and got, you know, uh, well, then I googled, uh, you know, it came up with year, or no, I'm sorry, uh, it came up with the 375 and 400 are the same, so then I googled THM 375B filter kit, and it came up with uh, is it 70 something to 78 or 7 no 77 so then i google the 76 just to be safe just in case 77 was a crossover year if they did that back then like they do with you know 05 to 06 anyway um so that's where i came up then i went to what o'reilly or rock auto i think i went to rock auto and looked under there oh, i'm sorry I went all over the place. This is how I'd find stuff. <laughs> I'd go all over the place. I went to Napa's website, typed in 1976 Cutlass 5.7 liter, and that's when I found a filter gasket kit. I'm like, okay, that looks about right. I don't know what the filter looked like then, but I knew the pan gasket looked right, and it showed a filter. And I'm like, well, it says for 400, so it should work. So that's what I did. I went to O'Reilly's website, and luckily the one right there in St. Cloud had that pan and gasket kit it's on the shelf power torque we're not looking for the best stuff we're just looking for stuff to get us by till we can find a four speed transmission for this which i don't remember the name of that transmission but uh yeah but either way this transmission's got some wear and tear on it obviously we can see i'm gonna clean that up clean the pan up the whole nine yards uh, we can get underneath there and take a peek i guess not much to look at um yeah, I was a little disappointed to find out, you know, I knew the lightning rods had been taken. That's why it has the Hearst T-shifter, not instead of the lightning rod setup. But it makes sense now 
that uh, maybe that transmission is more specific for the Hurst and the Hurst shifters, the T th lightning ring, the la la la, la lightning rods. Uh, so I'm assuming this car, when it got stolen, more or less went to a chop chop, and they took out everything that made it a Hurst, other than the engine. Well, who knows? They could have done the engine too. But anyway. Uh, you know, supposed to have an emblem or something in the center there that says Hurst on it, and the lightning rods, the transmission. Um, this does not, according to the option list, have the G80 uh, posi rear end. So that makes sense because one tire's bald, one's not when they did burnouts or drifts or whatever the hell they did with it. Um, so that says something. And then. We're missing the intake cleaner. That's a Hurst only option, a specific dual snorkel. And then, what else? Mm -hmm. I think that's about it. So they tried to take everything that made it a Hurst. And that's how we ended up with the THM. I don't know why they put a transmission back in. I told Dad, well, maybe they. You know, needed to dump it off somewhere, so they just threw a tranny in, tranny in it and called it a day. I don't know. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's a hodgepodge now. But we're going to fix it because there's wires down next to the transmission that have been cut up and tied into a knot just so they weren't dangling down. Um, and that makes sense that, you know, I asked Dad, I said, you know, you think that that, because I was thinking maybe like O2 sensors or something like that and... I don't know. Oh, and they also took the emblem, which is a Hearst item. So, oh. <clears throat> so let us see what we can see. But those are the wires. They're tied in a knot there um, for whatever reason. And I'm, I asked Dad, you know, do you think that transmission had electrical stuff on it? Because this transmission doesn't seem to have anything electronic on it. It's mechanical, pump, shift, you know, just put it in gear and fluid and and whatever does what it does. I don't know. But uh, he was thinking maybe the, the Hurst original transmission, the 4-speed, had something electronic because of the lightning rod shifters and the way they operated, possibly. That's the only thing I could think of because there's no O2 sensors down here that I can tell. You know, they cut the frickin' exhaust, the mufflers off, but they left the cat. I was like, um, you guys are pretty stupid, aren't you? <laughs> but uh, this also does not have... Oops. This car was supposed to be optioned with the... Uh, air ride rear shocks or the rear air assist or whatever this these are not that these are just regular joe blow shocks so that's a hearst option that's no longer on here and then uh well when they stole it they must have hot rodded the shit out of this thing you can see the dents in the tank you know just big ass dents in it and whatnot so they probably jumped it a little bit so that's always fun, right? And then get a big dent in the spare tire thing. and um, but Yeah, so a new fuel tank will be in its future just to have full capacity, no dents taking up its capacity. It'd be nice if I could find a big ur tank to stick in here because this thing's probably going to guzzle some gas when I'm done with it. And uh, I would like to be able to go more than 300 miles on a tank. That'd be great. But anyway, um, yeah, so fuel tank's not expensive either, but look how clean everything is. For being a 84 and supposedly having 36,500 miles, according to the odometer, who knows if it was rolled over, but I'd say these these frame rails are pretty damn clean for being, you know, if they were 136,000. So, but we gotta get some mufflers, we gotta get all that jazz done, and, uh, Yes, I know everybody's gonna freak the frick out. You can't jack it up by a pump. Well, how the hell would you jack it up then, huh? How would, how would you suggest? I know I don't want your suggestions because I do this all the fucking time. I'm tired of people saying, you can't jack that up by the pumpkin. Why not? Do you not realize that the weight of the car sits on the axle tube 
and tell me that there's any less metal on the bottom of the fucking pumpkin than there is on the axle tube where all the weight sits. Hmm, funny that, you know. People don't think before they speak. I've never had a problem jacking it up by the pumpkin. And the LBZ, that having a cracked diff cover because it's an aftermarket diff cover, it wasn't designed, or I mean, it wasn't designed to be jacked up by the pumpkin. That's why that cracked when I jacked it up. I didn't, I mean, I was being uber careful, but to not jack it up by the aluminum cover, but behind the cover, but somehow it must have slipped or something. And pfft, there she be. So, but anyway, that's aftermarket. Factory, they fit right along the bottom lip of the freaking pumpkin, so no harm and no foul. It ain't my first rodeo, people. And you'd be scared to know it's not just me jacking things up by the pumpkin, so you can't freak the frick out on me. Like, I mean, we jack buses. We jack semis up by the pumpkins. Um, I'm sorry to tell you, but all the weight sits on the axle. What are you talking about? Oh, you're going to break it, break it. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, enough rant for that. It just pisses me off when people start ranting and raving about stuff they know nothing about. So, anyway. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So I haven't checked a drive line. And this is what got me a little bit. The rear end looks like it's just soaking wet, right? But pretty much everything here back from this sleeve, which is part of the yoke, um, it's just everything from this sleeve forward, nothing from the sleeve back. Why would this get soaked if the pinion seal was leaking? And yeah, it does kind of look like it was wet maybe at one point. But we'll check the fluid if we can. We should be able to, yeah. Check the fluid, make sure it's full, and uh, we'll find leaks one way or the other. We just got to drive these things. We got to see w what it's going to do, because I'm thinking maybe grease shot out of the uh, U-joint, and that's what we're seeing maybe. I don't know. All I do know is uh, we're working on transmission. Let's get that pan gasket sealed up nicely, and... Uh, Fill it up and hopefully she holds all the gears, not start slipping and stuff. And um, I don't know. So the story was my uncle and my grandpa, when they first got this car, they uh, took it up to a truck stop nearby. And uh, by the time they got two thirds of the way back, it started slipping. And they had added tranny fluid before they left. So grandpa thought maybe there was a hole in the pan. Well. I don't see a hole in the pan. The pan's not rusty or anything, and it doesn't look like it's been beat to death. So I, I really don't see there being a hole in the pan. I just think, I don't know what I think. Um, maybe this thing's got a torque converter draining back issue. I don't know. Because my guess is that it drained back, overflowed, you know, out the dipstick tube or something. And then uh, the seal for the dipstick tube. Not all the way up the dipstick. Although you never know. Got a mosquito, sorry. Mosquito is biting me. And uh, so then, uh, you know, once you fired it up, it sucked up what was in the pan, which wasn't enough to fill the torque converter again. And, well, the rest is history. So, but it doesn't look like there's any catastrophic damage to the transmission in according to the magnet. see if we get anything to come out of this this is the same filter as what I picked up so that's good um, yeah I don't think there's big chunks or nothing coming out of course this is the clean side so, yeah and it does have three and a half quarts of newer fluid so Probably was a heck of a lot more brown. But I don't see anything on the filter media itself right here that's sparkly or nothing. So I think we're pretty good. Hopefully the clutches are okay and we can... Uh, and what you're seeing is chunks of magnet, like I said. I mean, it's magnetic. So for some reason the magnet is... Uh, let's see, where's that... Yeah, this is where the bolt was that holds the filter on, and I don't know if the magnet is supposed to go around the bolt or what. 
Either way, it broke. But uh, so anyway, I'm gonna get this put back up. We're gonna get fluid filled in it, and maybe take it up and down the driveway a couple times, see what we could find out. Um, yeah. So now I'm still ha having an idle issue. It wants to idle a little high, and I messed with the fast idle screw. Is it underneath the carburetor? No, no. You're gonna see up right there, where the tip of my finger is. There's a little round spot ish. That's the screw right there. So I messed with that. Got that's what Dad messed with initially, and uh, idled down, but then a little too far. <clears throat> but then you know my high, my cold idle, whatever actuator isn't working. It's not coming up and pushing the throttle at all. So uh, it uh, the check engine light was on. And I'm like, you know what? My wiper fuse was blown. Let me check to make sure that the original ECM fuses are good. Uh, one of them is so hard to, to tell. I'd have to put the multimeter to it, which I'm going to do. Because it looked suspect. Very suspect. Here's my wiper fuse. I mean, that was... That was clearly blown. But this one, for the ECM, it looks weird, doesn't it? Like, it looks like it might be partly blown, but not really blown. I mean, look at that. It looks like there's a break in it, though. So that's where I'm going to stick the multimeter, and we're going to see if we've got continuity. And, uh, because that just doesn't look right. So anyway, that was an original fuse in there for the ECM. I put the new fuse in, and the check engine light went off. But then all of a sudden, it started idling up high and dying. So... It, uh, you know, would fire up, and then it would just kind of, nah, 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 nah. like it was running out of gas. And uh, you could keep it going with the gas, but for some reason it just didn't want to idle. So, uh, so that's why I messed with that, tried to knock it down, but also get it to idle. I don't know, then it started running fine. Uh, I mean, I pumped the gas a few times, it fired up and idled higher idled that's where i was thinking well maybe that valve actuator is looking i come out and look nope not even touching so that's why i brought it down but then the stupid screws fell out and imagine getting that freaking screw back in there yeah that was fun so but it was still idling high even with the screw out but then i shut it down put the screw in pain in the ass um it just screwed it in a ways well then it was really high it was 3500 rpm and i brought it back down and now we're at about 1100 rpm and uh it's running choppier it's so i don't know what's going on uh, it might have sucked something up from the tank i don't know it just is not terribly happy i know i it does, i do not have a fuel filter on it i do not know if this has a factory fuel filter but i can tell you uh it, it just 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 boom looks like that it's different it's you know, you bring it down so far so where it idles a little lower, but then it's a dog, and then it acts like it's dying, and it's choking. It's, um, I don't know if not enough or too much gas. And then, uh, you know, you bring it, you just turn the screw in, the idle doesn't change much, but it brings the snappiness back, and it's responsive and whatnot when you flick the throttle. So I don't know. It's, I don't know. I'm not a carburetor guy. I'm trying to learn as I go, and this is, this is different, but, uh. But I got a guy I'm talking to about a cleaner and hopefully hood emblem. And then uh, I asked him about the transmission since he uh, you know, deals in Hearst parts. So hopefully I can get a transmission for this thing. Even if it's bad, I'm going to have it rebuilt. I just need the transmission. You know, but I'm sure that's going to be a penny. And then freaking I need Hearst shifters to go along with it, I'm guessing, because that's probably specific transmission for the Hearst shifters and well, that's another thousand dollars just for shifters alone. So, I don't know. We're we're dealing with it as we deal with it, but this is going to get expensive fast. S just to get this sorted, you know, with the right parts is what I'm saying. So anyway, but I uh, got a fan clutch. So hopefully, when we get all our cooling stuff, we'll get that stuff put in and cooling system would be sorted i looking at probably having to do coolant temp sensors because the temp gauge you know that's what i was thinking maybe the ecm fuse is bad and causing us not to have um you know the temp gauge come on 
but uh, even with that, I still, you know, it's not, the radiator cap's not very hot, but the frickin', I mean, the hoses are frickin' hot. I mean, they're, for less than 10 minutes idle time, it's, they're hot. They're well over 100 degrees, and this is like, I could hold my hand here all day, lukewarm almost. So, I think maybe the thermostat's sticking, but uh, we got thermostat on the way too, so. But yeah, so hopefully we can get this puppy up and going and get it done right. So, it's just one thing at a time. I want to get transmission because I didn't want to just keep adding fluid to it. I wanted to do, I want to see what the pan looked like. I wanted to, uh, cause, yeah, I thought it was the original transmission. I want to know if it's healthy or not. You know, this ain't the original transmission, but we'll make do with what we got just so I can get the thing moving and uh, do filter and pan and gasket and we should be good to go so stay tuned for more thanks for watching god bless